you for being present, okay, and then giving me the honor of your presence. As the title was read, uh, it talks about the phonetic features and syntactic structures of colloquial Persian, and then whether this syntactic and then phonetic features is observed by the Persian language speakers or not. In order to have an introduction to the article, okay, I would like to call your attention to the fact that language was invented by mankind and meant to help mankind to construct ideas and then encode the ideas in order to share it with the others, as I'm doing here now, sharing ideas with the others. And then through this established interactional relations with the others, the sum of this man is collected together, okay, would make the collective culture of every community and then would contribute to the individual culture of every, I mean, speakers. And then to some extent, language, culture, and the nations, okay, to me, seem to be synonymous with each other. They are not separable from each other. And then Persian language, among the other languages, okay, is believed to be one of the musical, harmonious, and then uh, euphonic languages. I mean, in terms of hearing experience, okay, Persian language is melodic and pleasing to the air. It does not have that harsh, husky, glottal, rough sounds, and then it enjoys the existence of lots of fricatives and affricates. And then in case of existing certain glottal uh, fricatives like he mentioned here, okay, Persian language speakers, we no longer pronounce the he as a glottal, I mean, um, phoneme. It's more fronted to the palatal area. Therefore, it's the nature of the he that has become quite soft and uh, non-glottal anymore. And then, Within the language, mankind, okay, invented the writing system to pursue this objective that the ideas, okay, should not be limited to the addressees in the presence of talking to, should be, I mean, kept into archives to be communicated with the next coming generations, with the people living in somewhere else. But unfortunately, this writing system that was invented to support the language and to be in service of the language, gradually gained some kind of autonomy and domination for itself that now we see that writing system is claiming to be controlling the spoken form of the language, dictating something to the spoken form of the language. And then it is some kind of restrainer to the language. The fact is, language is a live phenomenon that has got to survive in time and place. And in order to do this survival, okay, has got to make adaptation, has got to make changes. Otherwise, okay, it will not survive in the 21st century, the kind of language that was spoken a millennium before, 1,000 years ago. But written for due to the fact that it is a frozen, static, phenomenon resistant to change and does not tolerate any changes. Therefore, nowadays what we have, even in the native speakers, okay, that we speak something and then we write something else. And then we demand the children to speak the way we speak and to write something that they don't hear anymore, any longer. So the gap between these two, okay, would be getting wider and wider to the extent that there will be some time, I'm expecting, and there will be some kind of linguistic revolutions coming into existence. Generation will just rise up and say, okay, we are no longer happy with this writing system. We want to revolutionize it, and then define the system to transfer and to reflect the way we speak it. Now, colloquial Persian nowadays is spoken by all walks of life in Iran, okay? Whether the high elites to be graduates of universities or taxi drivers on the street or students, football fans, everybody. 
but written form of Persian language, okay, is, is spoken by nobody in Iran. It is meant to be written. And then, written form is the language of the books and newspapers. It is the language of TV announcers going through the written form. And unfortunately, it is the language of the non-Persian language speakers. <laughs> that is the problem. It is the language spoken by non-Persian language speakers. This is the Persian language, I mean, uh, the problem of this study. Now, the writing system that Persian language adopted, okay, was an Arabic writing system, as those, I mean, Arab colleagues of mine, okay, with their honor, as I said, okay, provided, I mean, presence with, uh, for me here. You see, ain, ain, of, ta, za, okay, these are borrowed from Arabic language, but no longer pronounced with the Arabic features in Persian language. They have become quite soft. For example, one ain is no longer ain in Persian language. It is just the first level a. We make no distinctions between Ali and then Ali. <laughs> we, we don't pronounce Ali as the Arabs pronounce it. We just pronounce it with Aleph, then Fatih, and then Ly, Ali. But that's the way it is in Persian. And then Persian language learners seeing Ali with the Arabic Ain, they try to pronounce it the way Arabs pronounce it. Oh, we don't do it. Why should the Persian language learners be forced to do it? Now, writing Persian language system has been formulated for more than one millennium. 1,000 years ago, Shahnameh was written with the Arabic alphabet in Persian language. Therefore, this writing system, okay, has been existing for so long a time, and then it has been uh, somehow um, controlling our way of speaking, but uh, speaking has had its own, I mean, efforts to change. Now, the necessity is raised out of this introduction that we need to pay greater attention to the colloquial Persian features in Persian language teaching and learning. The statement of the problem. The first person who recognized, okay, that the type of Persian language he had learned in India was not useful in Iran was somebody called Claire Tistal in 1923. He learned Persian in India and then was moved with his family to Tehran, to Iran, okay, and then realized, my God, this language I'm speaking is something sometimes made fun of with among Iranians. And then he came on with the conclusion saying that, well, as if I am speaking the Elizabethan writers, I mean, when I'm speaking Persian language. Therefore, concluding idea is that there should be an effort to bridge the gap between the writing Persian and then the contemporary colloquial Persian as spoken by the native Persian language speakers. The great rift, okay, between the two, just with an example I would like to call your attention here, okay. For example, I have written here, okay, man dar in khiyaban ast. This is the written form. man dar in khiyaban ast. But we never hear this expression in the colloquial form. Simply we say, man tu in khiyabune. man to in khiyabune. Compare it with man dar in khiyaban ast, as if a book is talking. Now, a spoken Persian has been restructuring itself to sound soft and gentle, but writing Persian has not been able to get along with this much change. This study's objective is to identify the most outstanding differences in the oral Persian and then in the written Persian within the language that the non-native speakers are practicing. To conduct the study, six upper intermediate Persian language learners, okay, were asked, okay, to speak, and then their production was recorded between five to ten minutes, and then the recordings were transcribed and then analyzed. We came up with the five outstanding features that exist in the written Persian, in the spoken Persian of the non-native speakers, but that does not exist in the spoken form. The number one, the most important one, is the word asked. That is the, is similar to, similar to is in English. But this word asked 
never heard in Persian language is spoken for. No matter how long you listen to we Iranians is speaking, you will never hear the word asked. But poor Persian language learners, okay, the first thing they produce, they will say, I am. A student say, man, a student, asked. In kitab, asked, okay? So then the problem is asked. Then the other one is the plural form of ha, and then the uh, direct, uh, definite direct object marker ra, and then the demonstrative, let's say, adjective on, or the uh, syllabic form on, and then the, the last one is is of here, and then analytic procedure. Every one of these five, let's say, written form of Persian had to be checked within the endings of the Farsi words. Then since in Farsi we have got six vowels, and then the rest are the consonants, therefore every one of these words had to be checked in seven possibilities. Six vowels, and then the last one were the consonants. Now, findings. Well, uh, I had this much, I mean, recording among these six participants. Number one had seven minutes recording, and then number two had eight minutes, and totally I had 46.5 minutes of recording that was transcribed. For example, student number one, okay, in case of the first example, that is the asked, equivalent to is, total number of asked in the monologue he produced were 16 cases, then non colloquial pronunciations, okay, a number of cases colloquially correctly pronounced, there were only five cases, but non colloquial there were 11 cases of non colloquial production. Then the plural ha, total 17, no colloquial production. All of them were written form production in their spoken form. Then definite direct object marker, 12 cases, four Colloquially pronounced, eight non-colloquially pronounced. And then the next one is the dat, that is equivalent to on, 24 cases. Fortunately, this one, okay, as you see, 18 cases with this students were correctly colloquially pronounced, but six cases were not. And then the ezafe, I had 50 cases of ezafe. Hopefully, okay, 48 cases this student had correct production of his affair, but uh, two cases that I have got here at the last column, it meant that he missed to pronounce the his affair. His affair was missing. Now, the same uh, totality of the, for example, is, that is the asked, totally within all the students' recording, there were 109 cases of asked, 24 of them were colloquially pronounced, but 85 of them non-colloquially pronounced. And then next one is the ha, that 115 cases, but only nine were correctly colloquially pronounced. 105 plus one missing, so 106 cases were non-colloquially pronounced. The same thing goes with the ra, 89 cases, 19 colloquial, the rest non-colloquial on, 151, 97 colloquially, properly pronounced, 54 none, and then 302 for his affair that 271 were correct. Analysis and discussion. As I said, for every one of these five cases that had to be checked, as you see, I have here seven possibilities marked. Number one possibility is whether the ending of asked, when it is followed with the first front vowel, okay, a, as in baba, then what would happen to in baba asked? How the student should be informed that, well, it is not pronounced in baba asked. It is pronounced in babas. Much easier. The spoken form, okay, goes on with making everything, I mean, easier. This principle that least effect, effort is applied to in linguistics. So we human beings, we try to save energy and time. Life is too short, okay? And energy is also too short. Both of them would be consumed up. Therefore, we have to be careful. Therefore, in case of language, we try to minimize everything. So in, baba, asked, changes to in, babas. And then, 
the second case, okay, we say in khane ast simply becomes in hu nas. There are two transformations applied here, okay, in case of in namas, in lunas, in you see two transformations, I have put it in under number two. Number three, okay, there is an interesting thing, okay. In Farsi, words ending in a are non-existent. There is only one case that Farsi words in, there is one word in Persian that ends in a, and that is impolite form of no, na. <laughs> impolite form of Farsi, no is na. And that is the only Farsi word ending in final vowel a. If we want to say this is his no, in nae us, in nae us. But so that one is not that much, I mean, necessary even to be taught. Let's move to number four, ending in the vowel e. For example, this one means sandali. Instead of saying in sandali ast, again, we have to say in sandali ye. In sandali ye. In obi Asked, we have to say in obi ye. And then transformation is written over there. <laughs> in obi ye, yeah, very good, very good. Very good. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then uh, ending in the short vowel o, polo, let's say tablo, in tablo, asked, simply we say in tablo, eh? in tablo, eh? in polo, eh? and then the next one is the long u, danish ju. University student means Danish Jew, and then say in Danish Jew asked, then becomes simply in Danish Jew. In Danish Jew, uh, quite easy and simple. And then there's number seven, okay, uh, counts for the fact that when the word is ending in a consonant, what will happen to it, okay? Ketab means, <laughs> Ketab means after that, in Ketab asked simply becomes in Ketab. In mise, in lampe, in dare, okay? So then, as we see, a spoken form is quite easy and uh, much better. The same thing with the next one that was checked, okay, is the ha. And then this ha, ketab ha, no longer is ketab ha. It is simply ketab ba. Ketab ba. You see, we mix the final consonant B with the A of the plural form, and then we delete the He form. It simply becomes in Ketaba, in Miza, in Daftara. And then the same uh, He deletion can be felt okay in the, let's say, morphemes like I also. Man Ham becomes Ma Nam. Ma Nam. Then uh, goes with the Ra. Ra Okay, ra is non-existent in Persian, a spoken form. Ra, exactly like ast, is non-existent in Persian, okay? It must be pronounced either ro or o. Ketabaro, ketabo, and in case whether it is ending into a vowel, must be babaro, but in case of ending into a consonant, simply must be just ketabo. Gereftam, mizo gereftam. Now, all the areas were checked and then the results found. Uh, Persian language learners tend to sound more in line with the written structure. That was the problem felt. And then out of these many cases, okay, 766 cases counted in 46.5 minutes. Only 342 cases were non-colloquially pronounced. Almost half of them were non-colloquially pronounced. Now, the results, um, I just skip them, and I go to, uh, how can we backward? <laughs> 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 But, but the concluding idea is that a concluding idea that uh, I meant to emphasize on is that the, the necessity of introducing colloquial Persian language features from the very beginning to the Persian language learners, we should not expose them to the written form for a 
first year of their education, and then in later on coming to, I don't know, to Iran, they realized, my God, one year of my life went on, and I learned something that now somebody has got to help me to correct it and get rid of it. Therefore, it's starting from zero scratch, it would be much better than correcting someone who has already established bookish, written Persian structure in the spoken form, and then trying to say, well, don't say this pattern. This pattern is not used in Iran. The necessity to nurture awareness in the Persian language learners of the colloquial Persian language features in terms of both recognition and production should be introduced from the very beginning. The last but not least, okay, studies of this type can be guideline to uh, language policy makers in terms of the whole nation, I mean policy makers, curriculum designers, okay, for all the, uh, let's say, um, educational program, and then material developers, okay, should be, I mean, taking advantage of such studies to include colloquial Persian features in their aims for the policy makers, objectives for the curriculum designers and material developers should also implement these findings in their course books. And finally, the most important thing is that the assessment and evaluation, okay, that is the feedback and controlling the whole cycle can also be corrected in order to give the proper feedback, okay, to the students and to the teachers, it's telling them, okay, from now on, we will check to see whether the speakers are producing proper colloquial Persian or not. Therefore, learners would realize that finally my colloquial Persian will be checked, not my written Persian. Unfortunately, tests are in written form. And that's the another fact, okay, that direct the whole process into a wrong, vicious cycle to go and give the feedback in the wrong direction and then uh, increase and then escalate the problem. Well, thank you very much for your patience. <laughs>